Hello YouTube, welcome to one of the longest, most difficult challenges in all of Pokemon. This is Bird Keeper Toby's Master Pokedex Challenge 2023 Edition. If you're not familiar with the Master Dex Challenge, it's a bit too detailed to get into here, but you can watch Bird Keeper Toby's video to get yourself up to speed. The short version is this is a Pokedex Challenge in Pokemon Home that involves catching a full living Dex of all Pokemon, forms, gender variants, and whatnot, where almost all Pokemon are from their original regions. There are also extra challenges, Bronze, Silver, Gold, Platinum, and Ghost Stars, for those of us who want an even bigger challenge. There is also a Retro Dex Challenge, which focuses on Gens 3 through 5 and doesn't rely on Pokemon Bank or Home, but we'll be doing the main challenge here. So how does this all work? With each segment, I'll be posting a condensed version of the footage I recorded playing through the challenge. I'm writing these summaries as we go and releasing them the same week, so I have no idea what's in store for this video or how far I might get in subsequent videos. I'll try to get you every capture, every evolution, and every important point in the challenge whenever possible. And apart from some particularly rare entries we'll get to later, this is essentially a start from scratch scenario, so you'll get to see me capture just about everything. Anything in the main living dexes or form dexes must be caught as part of this video series, or it is ineligible. This is partly for completion's sake in the series and also partly because some Pokemon can't be positively identified as coming from a given game, especially for pre-Gen 6 titles. The exception to this rule will be the star Pokemon, and any Pokemon listed as being obtainable in quote, any game. Usually these are mythicals or certain rare form variants. Since some of these like the Manaphy Egg from Ranger or the Pichu from Pokemon Box are extremely difficult and time consuming to obtain, I'll be carrying over any of these I already have from the previous challenges. That's enough explanation, let's get started. I made the decision to begin with the VC titles, namely Red, Blue, Yellow, Gold, Silver, and Crystal. We'll play through at least one of these games all the way through before moving on to something else. I'm starting from scratch, so the first thing I do is farm the starters. We need at least three of each region starter, one for each stage, and the simplest way to get it all done is to just progress to the point where we get Pokedex and Pokeballs, then we can box our starter and move it over to bank with Poke Transporter. This is a long, tedious process that took the better part of an entire day, but before long I had three copies of each starter moved into bank for a total of 18 caught, as well as one starter Pikachu, a Pidgey, and a Rattata for good measure. Now we can actually play a game. I decided to start with Crystal version because I'm a masochist and apparently I wanted 85% of my wild encounters to be ineligible for the challenge for some reason. I don't know, it, it seemed like a better idea before I started looking up the encounter tables, but hey, we have to play through the game to completion either way. May as well catch what we can as we progress to the E4. I already caught all the starters, but I'll pick Cyndaquil and evolve it to its final stage during the game. Otherwise, I'll have to level up or use rare candies later on. In hindsight, I probably didn't need to get all 18 starters done ahead of time, that was pretty inefficient. Oh well, nobody ever said I was good at this kind of thing, least of all myself. I just wanted to feel like I accomplished something early on. You'll find I tend to be a bit lax when it comes to efficiency. This is partly because I don't know what I'm doing, and also partly because I want to avoid any burnout. If I start skipping around a bunch, it's because I don't want to burn myself out by min-maxing or sticking with a single goal for too long. We're in it for the long haul, after all. As we progress through the game and catch a few of the early Johto Pokémon, I quickly realize that the real-time clock is actually going to be one of the most annoying parts of the game. Already, I'm playing through at night, which means certain Pokémon that appear at other times of the day simply aren't obtainable. If I'm not in exactly the right time period as I pass through a route, I might be unable to catch something. When this happens, we'll just have to come back later. Anyway, I completed my early game events with no significant trouble, and I let my mom know that she will not be saving any of my money. Now, I know she doesn't actually spend any money when she calls and buys items for me, but really I just want to minimize the number of phone calls I get throughout the game. It's annoying, and you can't decline calls in Gen 2, so the fewer events that can be triggered through the Poke Gear, the better. After getting Pokeballs from Professor Elm's aid, our first official catch of the run that's eligible for the Master Dex Challenge is a Hoot Hoot. I actually pick up two because I'll need a Noctowl for later. We'll be training one up for now until it evolves, or I can catch a Noctowl in the wild. We'll see how it all goes, but I don't want to hold on to one for too long because the Hoot Hoot Lines moveset is absolute garbage in this game. I mean, the only flying type moves we get are Peck and the HM for fly? Really? Not worth taking beyond the second or third gym if I'm honest. By then we can get a much better flying type like a Spearow or something if we want. Speaking of the party, I think I want to limit how many Pokemon I'm actually fighting with. 
The level scaling on this game is among the worst in the entire franchise history, so the fewer Pokémon I'm leveling up with in these wild battles, the better. I'll probably stick with no more than 3 or 4 Pokémon for most of the run. We can worry about leveling things up and all that later. Much later. I wrap up the route to Violet City by catching a Spinarak. I hope to encounter more than one, but it wasn't meant to be. We'll box this one for later. Upon arriving at Violet City, I make a beeline for the Sprout Tower. I need to get the Geodude I caught on Route 46 leveled up so it can learn Rock Throw and destroy Faulkner's team. While I'm at it, I also want to get Ember for Cyndaquil. We'll be running through Union Cave and Slowpoke Well later on, so the more levels I can get Cyndaquil now, the easier it'll be to prepare for Bugsy in Azalea Town. After completing an absolutely masterful boss challenge at the top of the tower, if I do say so myself, we're ready to fight Faulkner. It goes about as well as you'd expect. Violet City is never exactly a difficult gym, and we one-shot both Pidgey and Pidgeotto to get our badge. Moving on, we're going to head directly south towards Union Cave. I'll fight every trainer along the way for the EXP, and I'll pick up a couple of Hoppip and a Bellsprout because we're going to need something to fight the water and ground types. Cyndaquil, Geodude, and Bellsprout will most likely be my core team for the early to mid game, so we're pretty much set. While in Union Cave, I also pick up a Zubat to evolve to Crobat later. You might notice I'm skipping the ruins of Alf. There's a reason for this, which I'll explain in a future episode. For now, it's time to kick some rocket tails and save the Slowpoke from their evil ways. Wait, I have that backwards. Anyway, the fight was really easy, as was Azalea Town's gym. It definitely helps to have picked Cyndaquil. It's one of my favorite starters for this game for this reason. It's also because it's so rare to encounter fire types in the Johto region in general. You do get Growlithe past Goldenrod, but it evolves with a stone and those can be hard to get in the Gen 2 games. So Cyndaquil's really the easiest way to get a reliable fire type. Silver's rival battle wasn't much trouble either, and now with access to Headbutt, we can finally find a few more Pokémon for our Master decks. I pick up a Noctowl, which frees me from needing to evolve one of the Hoot Hoot, and I somehow manage to catch a Pineco as well. These little buggers are tricky because even at level 10 they know self-destruct and protect. It's really annoying to fight these, but eventually I prevail. Unfortunately, here I make a mistake. You see, one of the Platinum Stars is to obtain all the shiny variants of the Pokémon you can get from the Odd Egg. I don't have this from the older games, so I'm going to need to do it here. It sounds like a lot, and it is, but it's not as bad as you might think. The chances of hatching a shiny Odd Egg is about 1 in 8, so realistically you can just reset until you get one. However, I was stupid and I forgot to save before picking up the Odd Egg. So, after I realized my mistake, I decided to try hatching it anyway to see if I got it lucky, but I didn't. This means I have to go back and re-catch the Pineco, as the last save was after getting Noctowl. Thankfully, I don't have too much trouble the second time around. At this point, I'm in the Master Dex general chat over at Birdkeeper Toby's Discord, and I'm reminded of the PC duplication glitch. This is a fairly infamous glitch from the Gen 2 games that allows you to clone a Pokémon, or in this case, an egg. When executed correctly, you can get an odd egg from the daycare man, deposit the egg in the box, then go to switch boxes. When you see the do not turn off the power message, you guessed it, you turn off the power. But the timing is tricky. Too early and you won't duplicate the Pokémon, but too late and the save file will be completely overwritten and you won't be able to get another egg from the daycare man. I tried a few times, but my muscle memory is mostly from the Game Boy Color with this procedure, not the annoyingly stiff home button on the 3DS. Not to mention I'm running it through my capture cards, so it's not long before I wait just a fraction of a second too long, and I can't perform the glitch any longer. I get a total of three eggs. Not great, but with my previous attempt, that gives me four total tries for a shiny this run. Unfortunately, I don't get any shinies, but I do get three unique Pokémon from the eggs, so we'll add those to the main decks. In all, I spend about an hour and a half on this, so it's nice to at least get a few catches out of it, even if I didn't make any progress on the Platinum Stars. I pick up a Snubble and a Ditto for later, and after a bit of grinding, we're ready to wipe the floor with Whitney. Again, not a difficult battle, especially with Bellsprout's Sleep Powder to stop Miltank in its tracks. At this point our levels are a little low, not too bad, so while I spend some time fighting the trainers in the underground and on Route 35, I don't really bother with anyone inside National Park. I do however pick up a Sunkern, and I spend an hour grabbing Yanma, thanks to its abysmal 1% encounter rate. I counted the number of wild Pokémon I saw, and it took 93 encounters just to find one. That's about middling in terms of odds, but given the time sink, I'm quite glad it's over. We'll have plenty more opportunities to curse our luck later on. 
This is just a taste of what's to come. And with that, it's the end of the first segment. I spent a grand total of 13 and a half hours, not counting some time spent reorganizing my boxes in Pokemon Home to prepare for the challenge. That's just to complete the starter resets and get past Goldenrod on my first playthrough. Yeah, I fully expect this to take years to finish, as it'll take thousands of hours and dozens if not hundreds of playthroughs to finish everything. We've got a long way to go. But hey, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon to get notified of next week's challenge. You can also leave a like and comment below. Let me know what you think of the challenge, how we're doing, or even share your own progress if you're playing along. Until next time, farewell and happy hunting trainers!